You're listening to the Back Home Network, presented by Homefield Apparel. And welcome, Hoosier fans, to another special edition episode of The Assembly Call. This is episode number three of The Grace Burger Show. And wow, what a week for Grace and the IU women's team. As, you know, from a personal standpoint, Grace, you know, got off to a tremendous start uh, and joined the 1000 point club uh, in IU women's basketball history, a very exclusive club. So, congrats to her for that. And the IU women's team, you know, look, they opened up the season, you know, seventh, eighth, depending on what rankings you looked at. And then they go and they just throttle Kentucky at home a really highly regarded Kentucky team to move into the top four. I mean, this has been just a terrific start um, for the women's team, you know, big expectations. And obviously it's still early in the season, but so far they're living up to those big expectations and really seem like they've kind of taken the next step as a team. We'll have to see, you know, what happens through the rest of November and December and January. It's a long season, but you couldn't ask for more uh, from what they've done so far. So really excited to share episode three with you, Grace and Coach Marlow. I'll have a great conversation. They talk about everything I just mentioned, you know, how the team has started out the season, uh, you know, how Grace has started personally, uh, and really give you a lot of insight uh, into what's happened. And that's why I'm so excited that we get the opportunity to do this show this season, you know, especially now for this particular player who is clearly, you know, starting to etch her name as one of the best players in school history. And this particular team, which may well go down as one of the best teams in school history, it's just going to be such a fantastic opportunity to get her insight as we go through uh, the journey this season. So hope you enjoy it. Great conversation between Coach Marlowe and Grace Berger. And here it is, episode three of the Grace Berger Show presented by our friends at Feral Wealth and Home Field Apparel. Here it is. Hello, Hoosier fans, and welcome to the third episode of The Grace Burger Show, a production from Assembly Call and the Back Home Network. I'm your host, Jeff Marlowe, alongside the star of our show, Grace Berger. This is, we're doing 12 episodes throughout the season, and one episode each month is an Ask Me Anything question segment from the people in our online community at assemblycall.com. So if you're not a member and you want to ask Grace a question in a future episode, go to assemblycall.com and join our community, and you might have your question asked in a future episode. But tonight, we're going to kind of recap the first few games and look ahead as uh, the schedule is picked up. They're 3-0, and the fourth-ranked Lady Hoosiers now uh, for in the highest ranking of their poll t- in, in, in the poll history, and they go on the road this week to Quinnipiac on Saturday, and then they go to the Bahamas next week. So the schedule and, and the activity is really picking up. Uh, and you can look for a new episode every couple of weeks, and, and we try to work around Grace's schedule as best we can. And we hope that you will enjoy the opportunity as we continue to get to get know Grace and get a closer look at the IU women's program. Grace, welcome back to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be back. Yeah. Hey, uh, real quick, I wanted to kind of ask you, before the season even started, there was like a pro camp for little kids and, mm-hmm. or for younger kids. I shouldn't say little kids, but for younger kids. Just maybe just tell it, let our fans know, how did that kind of come about and, and what that experience was like for that? And how long was that? I mean, how long was the camp? And just maybe give us a brief you know, overlay of, the, of what that was like for you guys. Yeah, so um, we had um, the two guys from Hoosier Hysterics. I'm sure a lot of uh, Hoosier fans know out there. Um, They're two great guys who we've gotten to kind of build relationships with. Um, And I think they really took the initiative to reach out to our team as well as the men's team um, with all the NIL stuff Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of come about and just give us an opportunity to, um, you you know, make money, yes, but also really just get to connect with fans um, in a way that we couldn't really in the past. So, we just had a, a, a two to three hour camp for girls. I believe it was ages six through 14. Um, and so it was, it was great. I mean, anytime you can, you know, inspire young, young basketball mm. players. And um, I, I remember being that age and how much um, I looked up to, to girls in my position now. So being able to give back to them um, 
I think meant a lot to us and, and really get to meet them and interact with them, um, which is something we really haven't been able to do since COVID happened. We haven't been able to have camp. So I think a lot of us are really excited to, to see those little girls and kind of um, just interact with them on a different level. Approximately how many kids did you have? Um, I believe it was like 160. So we had a, a really good turnout, which was exciting and, and really good to see. And, and just the hysterics kind of, did they reach out? Was there a single person that they kind of reached out to, or was it just the whole team in general and said, Hey, would you guys be interested in doing this? Yeah, it was the whole team. So they came um, and kind of pitched it to our whole team and, and we were all really excited about it. So it was, it was everyone on the team. And the one, the one uh, kind of the video that kind of went on, on social media, especially on Twitter, you had a little girl that uh, I think made a layup and then, um, a free throw and then a three pointer. And that looked like it, it was at the kind of the end of camp and just maybe describe what it was like for, you know, what you were doing there. Yeah. So that was at the end of the camp. We had a couple competitions um, and that girl actually ended up making a, a layup, a free throw and a, a three pointer consecutively um, to win a basketball that was signed by us. So, oh, um, yeah, so it was really cool. She actually gave up a autographed um, Kevin Durant picture to get the ball signed by us. So I think we're all pretty excited about that. Um, but for the most part, the camp was just scrimmages and then us kind of doing some skill um, stations and, and, and whatnot, and then um, kind of end with uh, the pictures and, and the awards. So, and that was neat. And I, I think that's an awesome thing that the now that you guys get to do with the NIL and, 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 and props to the hysterics for helping you guys get that pulled together. So then you go to Butler. Uh, to start the season, I uh, think about a week ago, actually, I think it was last Wednesday that you went to Butler. Um, maybe just describe that game a little bit for us. Um, well, I mean, it was it was very exciting. It was the first game, um, the first real game where we were in front of a bunch of bunch of fans um, in, in so many years. And for our freshmen and sophomores, the first time they've ever been in that kind of environment. So um, I think we maybe were a little nervous going to the game, had some nerves on the team for sure. But um, once the ball got tipped and, and we saw a lot of a lot of Hoosier fans in the stands, I think we kind of were really excited and just uh, it, it was a super fun game to play. I heard there was a lot of red in the stands. There was. There was more red than than blue. So yeah. so we like to see that. Yeah, there we go. And, and kind of an interesting night. I mean, you you kind of just steadily pulled away from them. Like it was not on, at least I wasn't able to watch on TV. Um, mm -hmm. I think it was on kind of a pay per view type, you know, behind a paywall for it. But it looked like online as I was following a little bit, you guys just kind of steadily pulled away. You, you didn't really make a huge run on them, but just kind of steadily pulled away. Yeah, I mean, Butler's a, a good team, and, and they're really well coached, so we weren't expecting to just kind of come in and blow them out of the water. We knew it was going to be a game, a good game, especially being an in-state game. That always means a little bit more to everyone involved. So um, we, we weren't anticipating blowing them out by any means, but I think, um, you know, we just kept, kept pushing, kept following the game plan, and then you saw that lead build um, as the game went on. And on that evening, you scored your 1,000th career point as a Lady Hoosier. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then I believe before last night's game, you were you got a, uh, a ball to signify that 1,000th point, correct? Yeah, I, I got it with, with Nikki, who got her 2,000th point. So she kind of outshined me there, but it was still yeah. awesome. And I was actually going to come to that, that I don't think a lot of our fans realize that at least before she came to IU, because she came in as a, as a transfer, mm -hmm. uh, she was a big time scorer, you know, she and, was. Yeah. and she kind of, she, and I don't want to say changed her game, but she's really become more, I shouldn't say become, but at least for you guys, sometimes more of a pure point guard, you know, would I, would you say, you know, and, and maybe describe a little bit what's been like for her to, you know, cause you guys had kind of a veteran group and now she comes in, I believe roughly Christmas last year. And mm -hmm. so kind of what the simulation was for her a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it, it was an adjustment for her just because she was um, the, the main go-to and really one of the, the only scorers on her last team. So she was taking a lot of shots. Obviously she's a fantastic scorer. She still is, mm -hmm. um, but here she's, she's playing with a lot of great players and in a different system. And, um, Nikki's the kind of player that, that will do, um, whatever we need to, to win the game. She's very competitive, uh, very selfless. So, you know, we saw her at, at Butler kind of show her scoring. She, she almost had 30 points and mm -hmm. then, um, you know, the past couple of games, she's been really good at facilitating the ball, really good at rebounding, and then obviously always really good at playing defense. So 
Um, she's still a big time scorer for us in any game, but she's also willing to kind of step back and do whatever the team needs when, when we need her to as well. The Grace Burger Show is presented by Farrell Wealth. Farrell Wealth was founded by former IU All Big Ten defensive end Greg Farrell, who is now experiencing IU all over again as a parent with two girls who are juniors in the IU Media School, interns at the Cuban Center, and own their own business. And, you know, Greg learned trust and integrity while playing for legendary coach Bill Mallory, traits he's worked hard to instill in his girls. He also learned how to game plan. Feral Wealth uses these principles to help high net worth individuals and business owners pursue financial success. Wealth planning is their passion so you can live yours. Their fiduciary plans include investments, insurance, taxes, executive compensation, and charitable giving in this lifetime and beyond. Like any good team, the IU women's basketball team, for example, you need to plan and work the plan. Well, what is your plan? Contact Feral Wealth through all socials at Feral Wealth and their website, feralwealth.com. That's F-A-R-R-A-L-L wealth.com. Feral Wealth is a proud supporter of IU Athletics. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisory firm member F-I-N-R-A S-I-P-C. Yeah, and I want to kind of come back to the comment you made there about how you guys really do kind of, um, su- I don't want to say supplement, but adapt game to game. Because I think even last night was an example of where sometimes you're not always scoring. And you you talked about this in the first episode we did, that you, you, you realize there's more to the game. And I think that goes for all of you. I think it's one of the great things that people like watching about you guys is that there's, especially with the starters, but the kids coming off the bench as well, that you guys go to the hot hand, you know, and, and whether it's been Nikki or McKenzie or you in the past, you know, it just is, it, you guys kind of have that knack of finding who's hot and, and, and really getting them the ball. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think we all have a great feel for each other. We've played together for a couple of years, so we know who's hot, when to get them the ball. Um, and then we also know, you know, our individual games um, and, and when maybe we're not feeling it and we need to step back and kind of take a different role on the team. Um, and then it goes back to us having great coaching as well. We know that the team is bigger than any of us personally. So if we're not having a good game, that doesn't mean we, we just kind of give in and, and um, go sit on the bench. We can still do other things and um, still get the people that maybe are having a lot of success um, scoring the ball, give them an opportunity and make them better as well. So you get out of you get out of Annapolis with an 86 to 63 win to start the season. You come back home on Sunday. And you have Kentucky in a nationally televised game, a game that even Coach Morin said afterwards that, you know, you kind of still were remembering a little bit you, uh, from last year where you let a lead get away. So kind of you take us into the, maybe before the game, maybe on Saturday, what, what, the, what some of the preparation was like to get ready for that game? I mean, really, it was just like any other game. Um, all of us realized it was a big game. Kentucky was ranked 13th, I believe. So they're a really good team. Um, and we did talk about talk about last year a lot because it still stings. It still feels like it was just yesterday. Um, it's one that we really let a big game that we really, really let slip away last year. And I think um, all of us that were there remembered it for sure. So um, it, it was talked about a little bit. We watched film from last year's game. Um, and I think the big focus going into Sunday's game was just um, not letting that happen again. So just staying in the moment, whether we're up by 15, whether we're down by 15, just keep following the game plan, keep, plugging away um, for four quarters and not just 75% of the game like we did last year. And I don't want to say they're unique, but I mean, they play that half court trap that do you see that a lot or is that what makes them a little bit different and tough, sometimes tough to play against because you don't see it much. Um, I would say we probably don't see it that much. I think we've seen it. We saw it last night um, versus Norfolk state a little bit. We see presses throughout the big 10, but I would say the big 10, we don't see, presses a whole lot like that. The SEC is a lot more fast paced, a lot more aggressive, um, specifically defensively. So I think their style of play is a little bit different than the Big Ten, but it's definitely something that we've, we've seen before. So we were expecting it. And, you know, look again, I watched the game on TV and you look like you had a great crowd. Mm-hmm. And, and so I'm sure to finally play a home game for the first time in a couple of years with a lot of fans, there's probably, you know, even though you've already played a game, still a little bit, it had to be a little bit of kind of, nerves may not be the word, but just anxious for, for even like you said, your freshmen, sophomores, but even some of your veterans. Yeah. I mean, I just think there was a lot of excitement. Um, 
in the building. And um, I know when we ran out there for the first time and just kind of remembered that feeling um, of what it was like before COVID. Um, it, it was so, so great. And we knew, you know, obviously we know that Hoosier Nation's um, the, the best fans in the country and that they really support their women's basketball program. But I think since we've been playing in empty gyms and playing in decreased crowds for over a year, um, we kind of had forgotten that. So to finally be back in, you know, such passionate fan base and um, it, it was really unbelievable and um, uh, just a great experience. And it was also alumni day. You had, you had a lot of alumni back. What was just a little bit? What was, the, is that something that, um, do you get very many visitors to practice? Do you get alumni coming back to practice, let alone a game like that? And a little bit, and, you know, maybe you could tell our fans what it was like to meet some of those older alumni who were playing in like maybe the eighties or the nineties. Yeah. I mean, I, um, I'd say most alumni that, that came back are those, those older alumni um, just because the, the newer ones, you know, are in their twenties and, and probably off somewhere working, but they still get back some too, but um, so there were a lot of people that were playing, like you said, in the eighties and nineties and who really helped to build Indiana women's basketball. Mm -hmm. So just to get to talk to them and see how much um, our program and our team still means to them and how passionate they are about Indiana women's basketball, just like all of us are obviously currently so passionate about it. Um, I think it, it was just a really cool, cool experience and kind of put it in perspective how, um, what we're doing now is a, a lot bigger than, than ourselves. And then, um, at the end of the half. You hit a big half court shot. You were up 35, 32. You got it off just in time. I thought it was good live. And then they, you know, they kind of reviewed it, but, and it counted. Have you ever hit a half court, you know, kind of half court buzzer beater before at any time in high school or college? No, that was, a, that was the first time I've even come close. So <laughs> it was pretty cool. And, and that was one of those things, you know, do you, do you guys, I, probably not in the college level. That was one of the things we always did with my high school kids. Like when we went to our sectional, we always like, we're going to practice it because you never know when it's going to come down. So do you guys just even maybe goofing around, practice those kind of things? Um, well, usually the, the night before road games when we're shooting around, um, Coach Moran will have us each line up and we each get one shot. And if we make a half court shot, we get dessert at the dinner that night. So um, <laughs> that's and that's good stuff because I would have thought maybe college coaches like, nah, that's kind of gimmicky. And but it's not, you know, that's 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 good stuff. So then in the second half, you just kind of steadily, I should say, you're still pretty close into about middle of the third quarter, but you kind of pulled away and you get out, you get an 88 67 win. Was there anything that you thought that was key to kind of making that jump from, you know, I gotta say middle of the third quarter was still like a two or three point ball game? Yeah, I mean, I think. And I think we've seen this in all, all three of our games this year. It just goes back to our conditioning. Um, we, we outlast teams. Obviously, a team like Kentucky has so much talent that we're not going to come out and, and blow them up by 20 in the first quarter or the second quarter. That's not going to happen. They're, they're a really good team. But I think what we are able to do is maybe um, when they're starting to get tired, when their starters are starting to wear down at the end of the third and in the beginning of the fourth, um, that's when we really you know kick into our second gear and what we've trained for. Um, all preseason, all, all summer. Um, and so really, you know, we're able to just outlast teams and, and keep pushing when they might start um, kind of dying down a little bit. And McKenzie really benefited from that. She finished, I believe, a career high 29 points, uh, seven rebounds. And I know coaches talked a little bit about her improved conditioning. And, and, and I thought that really showed on Sunday against Kentucky. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she's completely you know, she was always, always really skilled, always really good when she came in as a freshman. That was obvious. But, um, you know, her ability to now play, you know, 35 minutes a game and just really be at 100 percent for, for that that long, I think, um, is, is what separates her from her freshman year to now. But also what separates her from other posts, because in the fourth quarter, she's she's good as new whenever the other posts maybe um, are, are kind of dying down a little bit. Yeah, and, and I don't want to get too far ahead, but a good win. I mean, you beat a ranked team at home, and, it, you know, if all things hold, should be considered a really good win come tournament time and when it gets to selection time. Absolutely, yes. Um, and then you only had one day to prepare, you, as you mentioned, playing Norfolk State last night. Was that a little bit of a tough game? Because you have said in the first – or in our last episode – um, I think it was that a lot of times you like to take the coach likes to take the day after a game off mm -hmm. and you didn't right. probably have that luxury in between the Kentucky and Norfolk state game, maybe, or did you, what was Monday like? 
Yeah. So no, no, we were, we were back in the gym on Monday. We had quickly forgotten about the Kentucky game. We watched a couple, you know, a little bit of film on the Kentucky game to kind of learn some things. Um, but we really moved on pretty quickly. Um, and then immediately started watching film on Norfolk state and then had a practice to prepare for them. And it was, it was a lot lighter than a, a normal practice, obviously, because it's such a quick turnaround, but um I mean, I, I think once you get into the tournament, the Big Ten tournament, the NCAA tournament, that's the kind of situation you're going to be put in where it's a quick turnaround between games. So it's nothing we haven't seen before. Um, and I think was really good to help us kind of prepare for, for down the line as well. Is that something coach will talk with you guys about a little bit? It's like, hey, this is what it's going to be like to turn around on a Friday to a Sunday or a Thursday to Saturday type NCAA tournament? Yeah, I mean, she, she definitely, I think, kind of emphasized that. And I think we all, for the most part, all of the starters at least have been through that. So um, we know we're taking it really seriously, just taking care of our body and getting more maybe mental reps and physical reps, but still being ready to go um, when game time came. And and you, as far as I can tell you, you'd never played Norfolk State before. So a brand new opponent. Right. Yeah. And, that, I'm sorry. No, and, you're good. Look, I was just saying that was the first time we played them. Ever. And so yeah. maybe that, you know, I want they, they hung tight with you through the first quarter, but then you put a big run on them in the second quarter. And, and again, kind of, you know, a coach type question. Was there something you thought that keyed that run in the middle, of the, you know, kind of middle of the second quarter, you went on a nice run in the half. Um, I mean, again, like, I think, I think we just stuck to the game plan and just kept, kept plucking away. Um, they, you know, we knew they were going to come in excited. Um, we have a target on our back now. We're a top 10 ranked team. Um, so we know every team's going to come in and kind of be doing things maybe that they don't they don't always do, hit shots that they don't always make. So they came in really hot. Um, but we felt like our defense was good. We were there to contest the shots. Um, and, and we thought we were, were getting good shots on offense as well. So I think um, we, just did, we just didn't freak out when they hit, hit those shots. Maybe we were down halfway through the first quarter. We just – kept plugging away and trusted our game plan. And going back to that earlier comment you made about everybody kind of finds a way to help you win. Last night you had 11 assists and Nikki had one point, but she, you know, she also had like four assists and, and I believe five rebounds. I'm looking at the stat sheet. So again, kind of just in last night, it was Alexa who kind of had the hot hand a little bit. And so um, we were talking a little bit before the show, you and Alexa, same recruiting class. Mm-hmm. Had you met Alexa before you like during the recruiting process? No. So I, I knew about Alexa, um, obviously, because we signed at the same time on signing day. Um, but I, I hadn't met her. I hadn't talked to her or anything like that um, outside of maybe following each other on social media until she got here um, in August of, of our freshman year. Was it a little hard? To, was it hard to find a kid from Latvia on social media? No, I mean, our our, that, our coaches are pretty good at that. So I think okay. they kind of connected us. Yeah. Yeah. I just was curious. I've never followed him. I don't think I follow anybody from, you know, from outside yeah. the U.S. on social right. media. So support for the Grace Burger Show is brought to you by our friends at Home Field Apparel, where they have one of the most extensive collections of vintage IU apparel that you will find anywhere. And it's not just IU apparel. They have over 100 colleges and universities and what they do is they go back into history and they pull out old vintage brand marks that haven't been used in a long time but that still look really cool and that have this really great kind of nostalgic appeal and they pull them into modern day and they've created such a great niche because you know a the the actual material that their stuff is printed on the shirts the crew neck sweaters the hoodies it's really comfortable it holds up when it's washed and then the logos all look just so cool It's just such a unique niche uh, that they have. And you can go to homefieldapparel.com. Again, look through over 40 items uh, of IU apparel. IU is their original school, and so that's what they have the most of. But you can also browse through all of their other colleges and universities as well. And when you're ready to purchase, if it's your first time there, use the promo code HOME, H-O-M-E. That will give you 15% off your first order. So again, it's homefieldapparel.com. Use the promo code HOME, H-O-M-E, for 15% off your first order. Now back to the show. You mentioned, or I should say that Lex, I believe had a tw- uh, career high 22 last night w- to go with 12 rebounds. So, um, but just maybe speak, what was it like for her? Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to get you to speak totally for, but for her to come from Latvia to come to Bloomington, you know, was that, what kind of adjustment was that for her? Well, she's um, a really mature um 
individual and she has been since the day we stepped on uh, um, on you know Bloomington's campus mm -hmm. um, and I think that's kind of the thing I've noticed about international students is they're really a lot more mature um, than, than maybe uh, the Americans that are coming in as freshmen just because they, they've been living on their own Alexa had been living on her own a lot um, since she was 13 years old she'd been off playing I'm um, in different countries without her parents and whatnot so wow. um yeah, so she she you know knew what to expect going away from home, and I think maybe didn't get as homesick as, as you would think because she's done it before. And you were we were talking off the, before the show. You and her have been roommates. Yeah, we've been roommates since since day one. So we've um, you know got a bond. We're really close um, off the court um, as well as on the court. That's awesome. And and so get you to three and zero. You get you get with a seventy two to forty two win last night. You get to three and zero, and now you got a couple of days. And just for our fans to, like we said, you're going to go go to Quinnipiac on Saturday. I hope I'm saying that right. I never know how to quite say it. Um, but you go there on Saturday, and then you'll have a couple of days, and then you go to the Bahamas next mm -hmm. week over Thanksgiving. Oh, real quick before we move on from the Norfolk State game, watching it last night. Did you know you're going to wear red? We did not know we were going to wear red, no, until we got there. Yeah. So is that something that coach, like, just maybe uh, kind of curious for me, how does that, how is that decided? Is coach, is it just laid out there for you and that's what coaches decided or, you know, how does that come about? No, actually. So um, Norfolk State had played at Ohio State, I think on um, Sunday or Sunday or Saturday, and then they came straight here. So their um, away uniforms were dirty. Um, oh, okay. Them. So that's why we, we said we'll wear red. Okay. And so was that a little bit of a different feel to wear red at home? Yeah, it was definitely, definitely different. Um, I think our, our one of our freshmen, uh, Caitlin Peterson, asked me if we just, uh, you know, go back and forth between every other thing. And I was like, no, like normally we wear white, white at home always. I don't know why we're wearing red. So um, I think um, it was a little weird, especially for the returners. Well, and, and exactly. But that's an interesting question from a freshman who wouldn't know the difference that, you know, right. oh, maybe we, just, we swap them in and out. So but so anyway, you're going to the Bahamas, especially next week. And down there, you're going to see Stanford in Miami and, and Stanford lost this week, but had been a top five team going into the preseason. Um, we were talking a little bit. When will you leave for the Bahamas? Um, so I believe we'll leave on Tuesday, um, which is two days before we play um, on that Thursday. So. And so you'll have a couple of days back in Bloomington after going to Quinnipiac. Right. We'll have about two days to kind of practice and get back to Bloomington. And, and are, are your families allowed to go? I mean, I'm not sure what the rules are on travel for say to some of these places like the Bahamas. Yeah. I think a lot of our, a lot of our parents travel really well anyways. And I think they're especially excited to kind of get to the Bahamas obviously. And then over Thanksgiving break, a lot of them are off work. So I think, um, we have, we have a lot of families coming down. I'll have a good little fan base there. Well, that's good. Cause I did, like I said, I wasn't sure like what the Bahamas rules were for travel yeah. and things like that. So um, I don't want to look totally past Quinnipiac, but Stanford, everybody knows that name in women's mm -hmm. basketball. Yeah. And I, it's been a while, I think, and you may not have been there since you played them last time. What you, you just kind of, you know, what do you think about Stanford when you hear the name Stanford? Um, I mean, like you said, I think everyone knows that name in the women's basketball world. Um, and then what I think about right now is that they won the national championship last year. So obviously, you know, they're the main team that everybody's hunting, um, especially early on in the season. Um, and so I think we're really excited about that game to, you know, we talk about wanting to win national championships. Mm -hmm. So it'll give us a great opportunity to kind of prove that that's something that we really can't accomplish. Yeah. And then after the Bahamas, you'll come back for a nationally televised game as part of the ACC Big East Challenge. You'll play a team, you know, North Carolina State back right. in Assembly Hall. Uh, hopefully we'll talk before then, but we don't know exactly when our next um, our next meet to, will be. Yeah. But so, you know, and, and I'm sure I'm not trying to get too far ahead, but that's that's kind of the upcoming schedule. And so you guys have some tough games. And I think we talked before. This is kind of what Coach Moran wants. Right. I mean, to, to be the best, you have to play the best. So, I um, mean, we, we know the Big Ten is, is the best conference in the country this year. So I think just playing those teams like you just named in the out of conference will really help prepare us not only for the postseason, but really just the Big Ten regular season as well. Yeah. And that's just, you know, I think that's one of the things that we really is starting to you guys. We see you playing these games and, and, and realize that, you know, 
the program has come a long way and, and we want to see you guys be successful. Um, just real quickly. Um, is it weird to be gone for Thanksgiving? I mean, you probably being a D one player, you probably haven't had a traditional Thanksgiving since you've been on campus. Yeah, I think I was able to go home for Thanksgiving, maybe, maybe one of my years, but when you come in to be a college basketball player at this level, you kind of expect not to have Thanksgiving and your typical Christmas break, like you would if you were a new, normal student. So um, it, it's not weird for me anymore. <laughs> and, and I believe you have fall break next week, correct? Yes. Yes, we do. So, so does that change how coach Morin will approach practice in terms of like time or does she tend to, does she like the same time every day? Um, I mean, we might practice a little earlier just because we don't obviously have class um, just to kind of, you know, give us more, more free time at the night. But um, like you said, we'll be gone for most of the week anyway. So it'll probably be pretty normal. Yeah. And just a couple, a couple quick questions for me, probably more personally for me when you're playing and, and, or you're better yet, you're watching a game, especially the men's game. Do you notice some of the rules differences like in your game where, you know, you can take a timeout and advance the ball if you have, if you're one of those situations, do you notice some of those differences in the rules? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I'd say, you know, obviously I think the biggest one is they, that they still play two halves and that we mm -hmm. play four quarters. Um, that's unusual to me. And then one-on-one um, -on -one free throws. We don't have that. That's, that's also unusual. So little things like that. I definitely notice. Yeah. And you have, a, you actually have a little shorter shot clock. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, and so I just was curious because, you know, you've played, you, you know, you really know the system, but I just was curious if, if the girl, if the ladies notice those things, like if you go to the men's game, you're like, oh yeah, they've got to get to seven fouls before they're shooting free throws. And you, I think it's for you guys five. Yeah. I mean, I, it's definitely little differences like that, um, that I noticed for sure. Okay. Um, you know, and Grace, you know, it's been a great start to the season. We're looking forward to watching the rest of you guys as you go through. Um, it's best of luck this weekend at Quinnipiac and best of luck next week in the Bahamas. And hopefully we'll be able to talk about a great experience down there. Um, but is, you know, just give you a chance here maybe to wrap up anything you'd like to let the Hoosier fans know uh, before we wrap up here. Um, I mean, I'd say I just want to want to thank them. Um, it's been great for all of us on um, the first three games, just tearing them in the stands and their energy that they bring. Um, and then even people that can't make it the game, just hearing them, them following our team and watching um, on TV, I think is really exciting for all of us. And I just want to encourage them to, to keep coming out and supporting us because it, re it really does mean a lot to us. Yeah. And I would, it would be remiss if we didn't mention that you guys helped coach Moore and I believe get her 150th career win the other night. Yes, we did. Um, she's, you know, I think one of the best coaches in the country. So I was really happy to see her kind of get some some recognition. Yeah. And and that's an interesting you make that comment because she made it in the in the post game, not about herself, but somebody asked her what the kind of the Kentucky game meant. And is it's she says it's nice to get the recognition. And I think that's something you've talked about. It's nice, but you guys are keeping your eyes on a bigger goal. And is that hard to do? when you start getting into the season and there's more noise around you is, or is it because you've got such a tight group of leaders um, that you're able to kind of shut that out? Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's hard because we're a veteran team and then um, we have, you know, the best leader you could ask for in coach Morin who really just keeps us focusing on, on one day at a time, one practice at a time, one play at a time. So um, when, when you have a great leader like that, it's kind of impossible to look, look too far ahead. Yeah. And, and again, I, I didn't get to see the game or the, the game against Butler, but the first two games I've been able to watch on TV, I just really love watching the energy you guys play with. You move the ball so well. And, and, and I think that's what a lot of the fans like seeing kind of that, what everybody kind of thinks of is old school Indiana basketball, ball movement, player movement. And you guys never, you guys, you, you battle. And I think that's something that you guys, hopefully the, the team understands that Hoosier fans appreciate that kind of basketball. Yeah, I mean, it's something that's emphasized every single day in practice by our coaches. So um, to hear you kind of give that feedback and, and that people are enjoying watching us play, I think is, is really good to hear. All right. That's all we have for this episode. For Grace Berger, I'm Jeff Marlowe. Until we speak a bit, until we speak again, remember, go Hoosiers. And that will do it for episode number three of the Grace Berger Show. Thank you to Grace for continuing to be here and provide such great insight. Thanks to Coach Marlowe for leading these conversations. 
Thank you, of course, to the presenting sponsor for the Grace Burger Show, Feral Wealth. Check them out at feralwealth.com. And thank you to Homefield Apparel, the presenting sponsor for the Back Home Network. Check them out at homefieldapparel.com. Use that promo code HOME, H-O-M-E, for 15% off your first order. Okay, we will be watching the IU women face Quinnipiac on Saturday and then November 25th. A huge game against Stanford, currently Indiana number four, Stanford number seven, one of the big non-conference games in women's basketball. So we look forward to watching that and then to getting Grace's insight on it afterwards because that's a great opportunity that we have. All right. Have a great weekend, everybody. Talk to you on the uh, men's post game show on Sunday. Uh, and then we'll look forward to talking with you on the next edition of the Grace Burger Show coming soon. Take care.